All right, well, welcome everybody. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us and volunteering your time to learn something new, um, a new way to engage your students in a virtual learning environment. So first of all, what is Google Drawings? Um, it is really simple. I really like it. It's like Jamboard with a little extra pizzazz. So you can create shapes and diagrams. You can add color to documents and presentations. So you can even use Google Drawings create something and then embed it into your Google Slides, which is really nice for the students. You can build charts and diagrams and flow charts. So there's lots of opportunity to make graphic organizers virtually. And then you can also assign them, make a copy for each student in Google Classroom. So your students can also, instead of just being consumers of technology, they can be creators using Google Draw. So to start a new Google drawing, you can do it a couple different ways. The first way that I like to do it is to open up your Google Drive. And then when you click on that new button, there's a drop down, and we always see the Google Docs and slides. But when you click on more, you're going to see that Google Drawings is hidden right under here. So you can make a Google drawing from your drive. The reason I like to do that is because if you open up your Google Drawings from a certain folder, so maybe you have a folder for your content area that you're creating things for, it automatically organizes it in that place. So you can always find what you're looking for. Another way that you can start a Google Drawing is you can type into the Omnibox, so that search bar, drawings.google.com. And that also works Anytime you want to open a new doc or slide or sheet or Jamboard, you can always type in docs.google.com and so on and so forth, and it will open up a brand new one for you. A best practice after you open up your brand new Google Drawing is you want to rename the drawing. Otherwise, you may have created a couple really awesome things, but if you don't rename them, they'll all be titled Untitled Drawing. And so we don't want our drive littered with untitled drawings because then it's hard to find when you wanna assign that in your Google Classroom. And you can also adjust the size. So you see right here the checkered space. The checkered space is the work area for your students. So if you were to print this when we're back in brick and mortar classroom, anything that the students create on that checkered space would be what, what is printed and then anything on the outside would not be printed. So you can adjust the size by using this little tiny arrow right here and then dragging and dropping. Now you'll see the toolbar for Google Drawings is very similar to slides. So we've probably spent a lot of time using PowerPoints and slides over the years. So the learning curve is, is not really deep for Google Drawings. You can see up here, you can insert shapes, add text box boxes, and then you can also insert images. So just like with anything else from Google, you can insert images from your computer or your, your drive if you have pictures stored in there, or you can search the web. So we're gonna spend five minutes and we are going to do a task just to kind of play around so you can see that it is as easy to use as I say. So we're going to click right here and it's a forced copy. So it's going to look like this and I can put it in the chat for you as well. And it's going to make a copy of our assignment. So the link is in the chat. You'll want to click make a copy. Um, I have a question about the Google drawing. One of the, um, uh, I guess problems I face is when when I post a Google Drawing using a Google, the Google Classroom Create button, um, it, mm -hmm. will not, it will not allow students to view and edit, but it won't give them uh, each of them a copy. Um, so I'm wondering if there is maybe a, a step I'm missing or why um, it won't give each of them a, a copy of it. Yeah, that's a good question. So it should, and we'll go over that more in depth um, in a little bit, but it should when you click the create and then so you're under saying the that. Assignment, you know how there's a that create button there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you did so, drug drawing. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you'll create whatever you want for your template right here, whatever you mm -hmm. know, scaffold you put in for your students, name uh -huh. it and all that stuff. When you mm -hmm. come back 
to the classroom, you want to make sure you do the make a copy for okay. each student. That each might student. be the one thing that you're missing. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. All right, so about two more minutes for those of you that are exploring. We haven't had any questions yet, so I'm assuming that you are all being successful. Normally, we would assign this in Google Classroom, and when you're in Google Classroom, you can see all of the work in real time, which is really nice, but I didn't want us to have to join one more Google Classroom for PD, because I know right now that is kind of our lifeline to communicate with our students, so um, that's why I did a forced copy for you, but I can't see your work, but I'm assuming you're doing well, and Amy, you have a question? Yeah. Is there a insert background or can you change the background? You cannot change the background as far as this like uh, gray and white checkered. That just always indicates that that's the work area for the students. If you wanted to make it white, something you could do is put a shape over it and then now their workspace would be white or whatever color you, you make it for them, but I would probably do a border so that they know where their workspace is. Is there a way to is. do like um, lined paper or like lines for them to write on? Ooh, that's a good question. There isn't, not like Jamboard, how there's a background, but you could do an image and then you could search the web and you mm -hmm. could do lined paper. I do think that one thing, um, depending on the grade level, and I think you're elementary, is that this it's not mm -hmm. locked. So students would be having a layer on top of your line paper, and they might possibly oh. move it all around and get a tiny bit gotcha. frustrated. Okay. Yeah. I would do in, in um, Google Slides, I would make the lined paper kind of the background. Right. Locked in the master so that they can right. write on top of it, but they can't move it. I think gotcha. it would be the okay. best because it would be like this, like see how it's just an image right? and then they could overlay. But um, if you're going to do writing, I think Jamboard's better. If you wanted them to practice penmanship, I guess it depends on what you want them to do. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. And I saw Paula has a question about color. So to use the color, the first thing you have to do is put in a shape. stop that. Sorry, guys. Um, the first thing that you need to do is put in a shape. So you can pick whatever shape you would like. And then notice right here, here's my tools. But as soon as I draw that shape, and I let go, I now have a paint can. So when I click out of the shape, it goes away. But when I click back on it, and there's this blue line, it means that I'm going to be editing the shape. So I can change the, I can rotate it, I can change the size, I can change the color, give it a nice little border. Uh, thank you. So that's how you would do color. Yes, you're welcome. That's usually the trickiest one for everyone. So but now we have- I had, my, I had my shape, but I couldn't get my color. Now I get why, thank you. Ah, uh, yes. So yeah, you had to click on it probably to get that editing um, back, which is the same thing as in Google Slides. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then this, I would say, is not necessarily different than a Google slide, except for when I work with um, my younger students or students who need more scaffolds, like maybe a word bank. What I like about this is you can put the words or pictures or images. So a lot of times we'll have students label diagrams and then put the words over here on the side outside of the workspace. They can then gr drag and drop those things um, and put it in the workspace. So that's kind of nice in Google Slides, you only have your slide to work on. You can't put any sort of scaffolds um, outside of it for your students. So that is one of the differences. And I think someone else had their hand up. Did I miss it? Maybe not. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to something else. We're going to look at inserting images in your Google Drawings, which is, again, very similar. The function is the same as using Google Slides. You would click on that little image icon, a drop-down menu appears, and you have several choices. 
You can upload from your computer, search the web. And then something I wanna point out right now, especially while we're in distance learning is that there is a camera feature. So your students can use their Chromebooks. They can take a picture of their worksheet or their penmanship or their handwriting or something, you know, something, whatever they've done. And they can put it inside of the Google drawing and then they can um, work around it as well. Something else to point out is when you insert an image, if you want, you can crop that image and you can turn it into any of these shapes that you want. So if you're creating things, maybe you're having your students do an infographic on ancient Egypt, something you just studied in sixth grade, they can kind of get really creative and um, make their drawings look really nice. So you can see right here, we crop this image of a bee into this cloud. You can make the border a little bit thicker. So that's something that will translate over to Google excuse me, Google Slides. So if you prefer to use Google Slides with your students, that same skill is going to work over there. So we're just gonna spend a few minutes playing around with inserting the images um, on that same Google Drawing, or you can open up a new one, kind of practice what we just learned and insert that image. And so to open up a new one, just to refresh your memory, you wanna go to your drive and then you can click on your create or new button right here. There's that drop down menu. And then we want to click more. And you can, let's see, my internet is being very slow. I apologize. There should be a more, and then you'll click drawings. So for the sake of time, I will put up your task for you. And you can practice inserting that image and playing with the border thickness as well. And if you have never used the camera feature, I encourage you to try that camera feature and just take a picture of you know anything just to see what it's like to put it in. It's a really nice strategy for mixing some low tech with the high tech. And right now, because everything is high tech, it's nice to find ways to incorporate that low tech into your classroom. Hi, do you mind doing the um, how to crop the image into any shape one more time, please? Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. You're welcome. So when you want to crop an image into a shape, let's get an image. Let's pull that. Just search the web. All right, so put in an image. I'll create that image for you. And then again, it has those blue lines around it, which means that I'm editing this right now. There's this little crop icon right here, but there's a carrot next to it. And it's actually called masking when you turn it into a shape. So when you click that carrot down, you can see all of your different shape options and you can pick any shape that you would like and notice that it changes it into that. And then you can adjust the size. And then if you would like to change the border, that's still this border weight right here. That's just how thick the line is. And you can change the color as well. Thank you. The carrot was what I was missing. OK. I have to remember my vegetables. Got it. <laughs> You're welcome. My timer stopped, so I'm going to give you guys two more minutes just to play with the image so that we can get to kind of the meat of it because the tool is quite simple in itself. It's how we're going to apply it academically to our classroom and our assignments that really has the power in Google Drawings. All right, so let's look at assigning Google Drawings in Google Classroom. So you know that you can make things within your drive which is what I like to do when I make my master templates for assignments. I like to make it in my drive. I like to organize it in a folder, but we know that Google Classroom has a newer feature, which is you can create kind of on the fly. So you got a little peek at that earlier um, when there was a really good question asked about that. So you can either start in your drive, create whatever you want your students to do that template, or you can go to your Google Classroom, click create, 
and then click assignment. You'll wanna title it, give it points, all of that stuff that we would typically do, give it instructions, but you can create right here, it's one of the options, drawings. And this is going to open up a blank Google drawing for you. And so you can make whatever you want your students to do. I generally like to put the directions on the side of the workspace for the students so that it doesn't take up their workspace. You can put the directions and in, instructions right here, but I've noticed just watching my own three kids and they're all um, teenagers. In fact, Miss Paulette, you are one of my my kids' teachers. Um, and then, so anyways, I see that they're even struggling navigating, going back to classroom sometimes and then doing the task and being in the Google Meet. So this is one of those times when you might want to capitalize on putting these directions right here on the assignment for them so that when they're doing their work, they can refer back to whatever it is you're asking them to do. So if this is really open-ended. You can make it as simple or as elaborate as you want. And Dr. Chan's gonna show you some great templates so you don't have to start from scratch because sometimes that's the hardest part. Um, and then I talked about how you could do scaffolds for your students. So if you need a word bank, or um, if you're teaching primary students, you can have them do a word sort and they can drag and drop anything you put on the side. So you wanna give it a title again, otherwise you're going to have a bunch of different um, untitled assignments. So we don't want that. So give it a title. And then after you're done creating whatever you want your assignment to be, the most important thing is to remember it's students can view, which means they can only look at it. And if it's an assignment, we wanna make sure we click the carrot down, click make a copy for each student, adjust the rest of these things, and then click assign. Or you can also schedule it as well for your students. You are welcome. All right. So that is how it works in Google Classroom. And then you can also see in real time, and I don't think I have any students in this one. You can see in real time their, uh, their work. So if they're working asynchronously, you can pop on. It's that same grading dashboard that Google, Draw Google Docs has. So you can leave your students comments. The comment bank also comes over with you. So let me see if I can find the classroom to show you that. So we know that feedback is really, really critical for our students so that they can adjust their thinking um, instead of just getting you know that grade later after you've graded it and they've moved on to something else. So Google Drawings is nice because you can give them that feedback in real time. So I'll open up an assignment for you just to watch. This is, I apologize, it's so slow. Alrighty. Here we go. So here you can see I have my students. I can click view assignment. I can see their work in a snapshot. I can click on it. And this is that grading dashboard that I was talking about. So while my students are working, whether they've turned it in or not, I can always see their work. And if I wanna leave a comment, you can see that comment bank that we use when we're grading their writing in Google Docs has followed me over here. So if I needed to leave this student a comment, I can just simply copy and then paste that comment in. And then they have feedback in real time. And then you know that your students, if you leave them a comment can reply also, or they can resolve it. You can grade it also from this dashboard as well when you assign it through Google Classroom. So that part is really nice. And you can do the drop down menu, just like in Google Docs, and you can go look from student to student as well. So lots of benefits from using Google Drawings in Google Classroom, they work really nicely together. Okay, and now at this point, I'm going to unshare my screen. I'm gonna let Dr. Chan take over and she's going to go ahead and share her screen and finish up with some connections to how we can use this in our content area. Thank you, Crystal. So I'll go ahead and share. Okay. 
Okay. So I apologize, I have a little one and she's very talkative this afternoon. So if you hear her, I'm sorry, she's nine months and I can't stop her or she's 10 months actually. I can't stop her though. She's got a big personality. <laughs> so I'm sorry in advance. Um, but I would like to take you through the teacher experience with just a couple of resources that you may find useful. And I'm gonna start you off here with a quick video Google Drawings is the quick oh, you know what? Can you? It's probably pretty low, huh? Let me start it over. Google Drawings is be quickly becoming one of my favorite Google tools. And here's why. You can annotate pictures, add text, add shapes to get your point across. So let's show you how it works. If you go to Google, log into your account, go to Google Drive, and then select the new button. You'll notice that there's a more section. Choose Google Drawings. Or you can type in drawings.google.com. This is your typical canvas that you work with, and you could insert all sorts of different objects, such as shapes, lines, even text boxes. You can insert images as well. You can insert your own, or you can do a quick search. So if I did a search for an iPad and I click on it, it'll add it to my board. I can resize that board. I can change the background by right clicking. And I can add shapes. When I add a shape, I can type within that shape. And I can even change the size of that text. If I need to collaborate with somebody else or just share this, I can click up here. If I'd like to download it, I click on File download as, and I have a variety of different options. So let's show you seven different ways that you can use this in your classroom. The very first example is creating a graphic organizer. Whether it's creating a concept map or mind map, or just a simple chart, it can be very powerful to have your students use Google Drawings. Google Classroom is the perfect way of distributing this because it can automatically make a copy for students, and then they can make it their own. Number two, interactive worksheets. Simply share a Google Drawing with students and have them drag and drop the shapes or objects into the proper spot. Or take it a step further. Have students use this protractor to measure out an angle, type in the angle right here, then use it to draw their own shape. Studying about states or countries, this is a great graphic organizer for students to type in their information and even hyperlink it. Infographics are a really popular way of communicating statistical information. Why not make your own through Google Drawings? Or explain complex concepts such as the water cycle or the metamorphosis of a butterfly. Go through and draw the shapes, add the objects, and even add text. Label images. This is a great way to help your students or even your colleagues understand complex directions such as step one, step two, or step three or even have your students do it. Studying different parts of speech, why not take a picture of some random objects and have students label that with their own shapes. Studying about cells, give the students a picture of a cell and have them use the text box and arrows feature to annotate it. It's a great way of creating visuals and diagrams. Perhaps you want to hang this in your classroom or you want to have students have this as a reference on their device. It's a great way of understanding what's the difference between one half and one fourth. It also allows you to show complex mathematical concepts, angles, measurements, etc. And last but not least, a timeline. Why not create a timeline template and have students enter in information from the parts of a story to historical events? Other ideas include creating digital badges, seating charts, classroom posters, memes, collages, comic strips, and even interactive graphics with hyperlinks. So check out Google Drawings today, and good luck. Okay, so this, um, I wanted to let you know that there are templates available, so you don't always have to start your Google Drawing from scratch. Um, they have templates that have already been pre-made, um, there's a place called the uh, Google Drawings Manifesto that has a lot of templates for you to use. 
Um, and then here you can assign the graphic organizers like Venn diagrams and all other things that you may find useful in your class. So I'm actually gonna show you what that site looks like now. And there are some slides that we don't have in our presentation that will show, but you have access to it. That'll just give you like a step-by-step -step just for you to reference later as you look back. So let me go ahead and share with you. So this is the Google, um, Google Drawing Manifesto. And I already have it linked into the slide, so it'll take you directly to the graphic organizer templates. And to access these, you would select the blue get, get the templates button. From there, you'll want to scroll down and then select the way that you would like to access the templates. So you can use Google Drawings or you can use it for it with PowerPoint, but since we're doing Google Drawings today, we'll go ahead and access it here. And thank you, Crystal, for dropping the link in the chat as well. So you'll notice here, oh wait, you know what? You probably can't see my tab, huh? <laughs> so you'll notice here that I have um, access now to many different templates. And this is opened up directly in my drive. And what you'll want to do is select one that you may like. So I'll choose the Freyer model here. And then notice that it opens here for me. And what I wanna do with this is make a copy of it. So that way I can save it directly to, and I already have a folder selected for vocabulary. So I'll save it there. And then you can now edit the template and make it suit the needs of your own students. So tailor it for your own class. So that was one resource I wanted to show you. There's a lot of different templates to play with. And there's another resource that actually my genius friend Crystal found today. <laughs> Um, and this is from Control Alt Achieve. And this here shows you some different um, ideas that you can use for math in your classroom. So for lines of symmetry, partitioning shapes, and also the standards are listed there as well. Your students can make um, shape images like RoboDog here, RoboDog 3000. Um, so these are just some tools you can even do fractions with your students, which I thought was really good. I wish I knew that this was here when I was teaching third and fourth grade. <laughs> um, there's also ways to do graphs. So you really have endless possibilities using Google Draw. So I'm gonna take you back into the presentation here. And um, now I actually wanna give you a little bit of time to explore these two different resources. Choose one or choose both, it's up to you. Um, and just explore and see if you could find some things that you'd be able to use within your class. Uh, maybe three activities that you may like, and it's just something to kind of give you a head start on something you possibly may be working on now or in the near future. And now's a great time also to ask questions so you can unmute yourself or just type it into the chat. In the meantime, have fun playing. Oh, mine has music, I'm sorry. <laughs> Turn off the music. <laughs> it was party time. <laughs> right? <laughs> Goes good with the piano lessons my kids are having right now. A little <laughs> electronic desk. So um, right now I'm working on this project on Google Drawing, um, making a fraction monsters. And I'm having trouble with so basically you're taking the that dog of shapes and they're making, I'm I'm giving them like a uh, half of a piece and then a third of a piece and uh, a whole to make, to like put them together to make a monster. And then they're gonna add the fractions that are inside. So the problem I'm facing right now is that I'm putting the, the, ha the, the number one half inside the shape but when I, but if they want to duplicate that, it won't duplicate the half. They'll, it only duplicates the shape. So I'm wondering if the, if I'm gonna have to like, how do I, how do I duplicate the shape that has the fraction inside, um, without for the kids? Like, how do I go around that? So I'm thinking there, sh there may be a way to lock the fraction onto the shape. I would uh -huh. have to look, Crystal, do you know if there's a way, you know how you can combine images onto shapes? Can we do that in draw? 
I was thinking I have to play with it too. I think that when you make the shape, instead of putting a text box in it, you can just type automatically. At least I know with the other Google apps for education, you can. So I will play with it, Wendy, and let you know. That sounds like a really fun activity though. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm really excited about it. But if this is going to work, like I was just putting in a text box half inside the shape, mm -hmm. but it's duplicate it with the fraction. So it's just, I think it's going to make the kids a little, it's going to make it confusing for them. Um, oh, yeah, I figured it out. Okay. okay. So, Wendy, if you put in your shape, whatever it is, and then uh -huh. just start typing when you're still, like, have the blue box for editing, it uh -huh. will, and then you can copy and paste, um, copy, yeah, copy the whole shape and then uh -huh. paste it. Um, that duplicates okay. it with the text in there exactly the way you want. Okay, so don't don't use the text. Just like don't use the text box. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, so I'm trying yeah, and that. I'm I'm guessing is it third grade? It's fifth grade. Fifth, oh, fifth grade. Okay, and then you could even model it. I bet you they could. They have the digital literacy skills too. If you show them how to do that that if they want to create outside of the templates that you give them, they can probably do that as well. Yeah, I just did it. It does, it does lock in the number inside the shape when you do okay. it. Yeah, it works. Okay. Thanks. Perfect. You are welcome. Debbie, I hope you're yeah, getting good ideas for those gate kiddos. <laughs> Some extension enrichment. We have about a minute and a half left for you to enjoy your time playing in your Google Drawing. I hope you're finding some great things and tools that you can use with your students. Okay, and our time is up. Do we have any other questions or comments, concerns? Having fun playing? <laughs> I'm sure it's been a long day too, especially after um, getting back from break and getting back into routine. <laughs> So if you wouldn't mind, would you please type into the chat um, at least one of your the things that you like the most, maybe your um, favorite template that you could uh, that you might be using with your students or even some ideas that you might have that you would like to share. I see that Deborah said that she loves the templates that she can adapt for intervention engagement as well as with teachers and training. Yes, definitely. The choice of graphic organizers. Amy says she'll use the templates. She loves the KWL chart, fair models, and more. Can really like the video and show the fraction bars. Yeah, fractions are always fun to teach. <laughs> um, also, the cause and effect template that will be um, it'll be useful when studying relationships within historical fiction or historical events. I'm sorry. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, we have a, a bonus task in there that you can look at later on. Um, we actually just want to open up the floor for you for Q&A, some questions that, um, that we may be able to answer. And we also ask that you complete the feedback form. This lets us know if we need to make any adjustments to our PD um, as we move forward. But thank you so much for your time and for attending. And um, if you have questions, Crystal and I will be more than happy to answer for you. I, real fast has, are you having teachers just share in the share drives that every grade level has, or is there a special folder for these, or um, is there a central library of what teachers created so we don't reinvent the wheel? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure if there is one. The only one that I know about is just what I shared with you, the templates, um, but I don't know if teachers have created anything besides the, I know that there are some shared drives within the district, but I don't know if there are Google drawing templates in there. I haven't seen them myself. I just know that there is a plethora of information in there. Um, so I don't, that's something I would like to take a look at myself though. So I think I'll go ahead and peek in there. And if I, if you're okay with it, I can message you and let you know later on. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Great question.